Rant time! Apple just unveiled the new version of the iPhone and it's pretty neat. Very neat. Fantastic, perhaps. But, and it's a big but, Apple have been lying to you about their iPhone's cameras, lying to us all, for years and years, and it bugs the absolute crap out of me. And it's time for me to finally unload on this. It's been roiling away for years. Now, the full truth of it is they lie for a pretty good reason. And frankly, in their position, I would tell a similar but way more honest story in the advertising because frankly, most people are ignorant, which is distinct from stupid, but ignorant of some basic facts about how cameras work. And if you told them the truth, they'd just be confused and make them feel stupid, which is not something advertising should ever do to people it's trying to separate from their money. They want you to feel clever, creative, powerful, and smart because you chose their product, their powerful photo product thing. But the cold hard reality is Apple lie all the damn time. And every single time I see uh, these particular camera related lies, it sticks in one of the more jagged corners of my autistically wired brain in a place I find difficult to dislodge. So um, here's a video about Apple's lies and why it bugs me so much and why it probably won't bug you at all. Now let's talk about the camera. Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, if you've been keeping an eye on my channel for long enough, you know that a bunch of years ago, I frequently covered photography and videography, hardware especially, cameras, lenses, lights, mics, that kind of thing. I drifted away from that gradually, uh, as when I first started focusing hard on that stuff, a lot of really exciting things were happening in the industry. Lots of innovations and evolutions and mirrorless cameras were just starting their rise to eventually destroy DSLRs as the camera of choice. Advanced image stabilization technologies that physically moved the sensor around. Uh, still cameras becoming so good at video, they were murderalizing the handicam industry. Consumer grade 4K video came along and phew, but then it kind of stagnated and it was far less exciting to cover. And of course, mobile phone cameras started dissolving first the happy snapper market and then the zoom compacts. And eventually they got so good, even working content creators could rely on them in part or in full for making stuff that made them money. And I've used this on professional projects and the ones that came before it. And now mobile phone cameras like the modern iPhones have a large portion of the technologies that first excited me about the camera market when I started making content specifically about it. High bit rate, low compression 4K video, practically useful low light video performance, a physically based image, sensor shift, stabilization, multi-lens choices and flexibility, even onboard mics that don't suck donkey rectum. It's all there, in your pocket, right there. The point I'm driving at by sort of establishing all this is I know from what I speak when it comes to camera nerd stuff and yeah, I do miss covering it here on the channel a little bit sometimes. So when I tell you that Apple lie to you about their cameras, it's not mere clickbait. I mean, it's pretty provocative, sure, but it's also 100% true. They are lies, simple lies. And the lie comes in how they describe their camera lenses, specifically something called focal length. Going from 13 to 120 millimeter focal length. It's one of like a dozen techno jargon terms tied into the design and physics of how lenses actually work. All lenses, not just camera lenses, but you know, even the ones in your eyeballs. In simplest terms, which is all we really need here to get to the guts of the issue. Uh, focal length is the physical distance between the point of convergence, that bit in the lens where all the light converges. Remember from like uh, science or, or, or physics classes back in high school, biology, whatever, uh, you might have learned that the lenses in our eyes flips the image upside down. So it's projected at the, you know, on our retina. It's upside down back there. And our brain flips it around automatically. So we see everything the right way up. Well, the point of convergence is the bit in the middle of that process of flipping that image upside down. From that point of convergence, to the camera's image sensor, or in old cameras, the film plane, or indeed your own retina, that is the focal length, that distance when you measure it. So a 50 millimeter lens, like one I have handily here, has literally a 50 millimeter distance between its point of convergence, which is around about there on this lens, when focused out to infinity, and the image sensor, a bit in the back of the camera there, uh, that's 50 millimeters. And we measure uh, at the so-called infinity focus of a lens because the camera lenses tend to 
use groups of lenses internally and they move around when you focus. Uh, so the actual focus length varies a little bit um, just because, you know, stuff moves around. If you know your camera terms, this is what we call focus breathing. Uh, some lenses correct for it, some don't. Some lenses have it worse than others, some don't. You know. And we measure this distance in millimeters because we're not ass backwards imperial savages and like all the important or useful things, metric is the standard of use. The new iPhone 15 Pro uh, that was just announced is advertised as having a 24mm main camera lens, a 13mm ultra-wide lens, and a 120mm telephoto lens. Problem is, the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max are both merely 8.25mm deep. So how on God's festering earth do you imagine you get a lens that has a 24mm focal length not the entire lens, but just the focal length, like that bit. That is itself significantly deeper than the entire device, and that's not even counting the rest of the lens, and the image sensor, and the electronics, and the front and back of the phone. You tell me how you squeeze a 24mm focal length into an object that is less than a third of that. Uh, the answer is you don't. It doesn't work the so-called 24 millimeter lens. It doesn't even work for the so-called 13 millimeter lens and absolutely does not work for the 120 millimeter lens. But they do something very clever with that last one. So I will come back to it near the end of the video. In any case, when Apple tell you these are 24, 13 and 77 or 120 millimeter lenses, it's an absolute lie. And I mean, absolutely it's a lie. There is zero truth in it. Not even fuzzy truth. And Apple know that because they haven't always done this. Back just over half a decade or so ago, they wouldn't even mention the focal lengths of the lenses. I remember having to look it up when I was doing reviews and things like that of these things. They just referred to their multi-camera lenses as wide or telephoto or portrait and things like that. The wide angle camera, the telephoto camera. But once they got to a point where they wanted to start framing their devices as professionally capable ca uh, cameras, which indeed they had become by then, they started using some more nom de culture from serious photography, ISO, bokeh, focal length. These terms become sort of marketing sprinkles on top of when they talked about their cameras in the iPhone. But they wanted to use numbers that made their camera sound just like the big cameras. So when Apple say that their camera has a 24 millimeter focal length, what the actual truth is their lens, combined with the size of the sensor behind it, produces a field of view that is equivalent to what you would see from a 24mm lens when used on a full-frame camera. And when I say field of view, I mean literally the field of view. Do you see 90 degrees, 120 degrees, what do you, 13 degrees? What do you see? That's the field of view from a lens. So their lens, combined with the size of the sensor, produces a field of view that is equivalent to what you would see from a 24mm lens when used on a full-frame camera. And focal length equivalency is not a new thing in photography or even photography marketing for that matter. Even back in the film days, there were half-frame 35mm cameras. I still have one. It's in a box over there. And in the digital age, full frame cameras have sat alongside APS-C, which is a smaller uh, sensor format. And on those cameras, you'd multiply the focal length on the lens by 1.5 or 1.6, depending on the brand. Nikon and Canon did it slightly differently. Um, then you would get the equivalent focal length of that lens. And on Micro Four Third cameras, something I shot for years on, still do, that camera's a Micro Four Third one. My other face camera's a Micro Four Third one. Uh, their sensor is half the size of full frame. So my 25mm lens attached to that camera, as far as the field of view went, acted like a 50mm lens does on a full frame camera. And that's what Apple uses for their lie, that equivalency. They don't tell you the real focal length of the lens because that would sound lame. It's single digit millimeters. And it would be effectively meaningless to the average Joe who knows nothing about how cameras actually work, but stuff they've heard their mates say, like, oh, I use a 50 mil lens for this. No, they use the focal length equivalent to communicate the effective field of view from their camera in reference to, and as measured by, a lens on a full frame camera. So that 24 millimeter number is a lie insofar that the lens actually has a real focal length of less than eight millimeters, because it has to, because that's, that's how deep the phone is. It's likely something closer to six, six and a half-ish. I haven't done the math on the new phone because you have to do the math on sensor size versus equivalent uh, millimeter size. And you, there's, there's math you can do to figure out the real lens. Um, I've done that for older iPhones, haven't done that for the new one yet, because I'm, it's the first thing in the morning, man, I'm tired. The real number, the actual focal length 
uh, just isn't used. Instead, Apple want the equivalent out there. So they do the math based on the real lens and the sensor size, and they tell you, well, it's a 24 mil lens. It's not. It's like in my Micro Four Thirds example. It's uh, sensor is half full frame, so the math on the equivalent focal length stuff is easy. A 24 mil lens has the same field of view as a 50 mil lens on a full frame camera. But phones use tiny sensors, and they are not standardized and can and do change between generations of phones, and even between like all these three different lenses. There are two different image sensor sizes in between these three lenses, for example. Same as on the new phone as well. So you wouldn't even be internally consistent if you gave the real numbers uh, for, the, for the real focal lengths. And if the image sensor size changes, you have to change the lens's real focal length to get a different desired equivalent. So if you change the sensor size between two different phone generations, you have to change the lens as well. It'll be a different focal length, even though the result will be acting as if it had the same focal length because of the field of view. It gets really confusing really quickly if you know nothing about how actual lenses really work. So my 24 mil, well, it's a commonly desirable focal length in real cameras, especially for things like candids, family photos, very popular for street photography uh, and that kind of run and gun shooting. While 50 millimeters is commonly desirable for sort of standard portraits and things like that. Um, so Apple want to sell you their iPhone using those numbers, numbers photographers are familiar with uh, and use every single day. The equivalent focal lengths that equate to commonly used field of view that photographers are familiar with. Practical, flexible, useful numbers. Which is how we finally wind up with things like the iPhone 14 Pro, the one that's being replaced, uh, being advertised as a 13mm lens, a 24mm lens, and a 77mm lens. When the reality is on that, it's got a 2.2 millimeter lens, a 6.9 millimeter lens, and a nine millimeter lens. Much less impressive sounding, isn't it? And functionally useless when you're trying to do comparisons. Which brings us back to that so-called 120 millimeter lens on the new phone. About 70 to 85 mil lenses are commonly used in classical portraiture and also specific kinds of landscape and animal photography. You will find some people extend out to 100, 120 mil with that kind of photography as well. But even with Apple's lies, as we've discussed, 120 mil equivalent lens in a space so shallow and on a sensor size that they need is, is more or less impossible. So the way Apple solved for this, well, it isn't a new invention to start with. This isn't an Apple invention. This is standard technology we've had for a while now. Many, many hundreds of years. They use a fancy type of prism to allow for a longer focal length of the lens, effectively enlarging the distance the light travels before hitting the sensor. The problem with doing this, and the reason it's not done as standard in regular cameras to make, you know, lenses smaller and lighter, if you used a prism in this to, you know, reduce the amount of you know, space you needed for the lens stack, you can make this a lot smaller. The problem with doing that is, um, is because the more fiddling you do with the light path, the more opportunity you have for aberrations, losses, flaws. Because, you know, no surface is perfectly reflective. You're going to lose a little bit of light every bounce you take, for example. It's going to introduce some aberrations to the image if everything isn't optically absolutely perfect and you can't get there on manufacturing scale that Apple are talking about doing. So the prism is a cheat with some drawbacks. So it's going to be real interesting to see this thing in the field, like being put to proper use or being tested, you know, A-B tested. I've no doubt that Apple are using their clever machine learning cleverness and their processor and stuff to hide the image flaws this kind of system can and will generate. But fact is, even if it is faked by computational photography tricks to hide these flaws, if the viewer doesn't see the issues, then there are no issues in the image. That's just the fact of the matter. These are cameras, not scientific monitoring devices. Pleasant data is more important than precise data. Oh, and there's one more lie Apple love telling. Two, really, but they're interconnected lies. One big lie, two little lies, I suppose. The first is they keep calling image cropping zoom. And worse, optical zoom. Our longest optical zoom yet. 5x optical zoom at 120 millimeter focal length. In photography, a zoom is using physical lenses moving around to alter the focal length. Not every lens does it by sort of extending out the front. Some lenses have internally uh, zoomed uh, mechanisms, but you know, the lenses still shift around inside there. And in this way, uh, a zoom lens can have varying focal length, like this one right here. Uh, this is a zoom lens for my full frame camera. 
Its focal length can vary between 20 and 60 millimeter, making it an extremely useful lens, really. I love this thing. But the end result of changing your focal length, zooming, or swapping out for a different lens, is much more than just a different field of view, which is what we've been talking about so far. It changes what photo nerds usually call compression or depth compression. And I'm not talking about data compression or file size. What we mean is visual compression subject to background. Two different focal lengths produce different depth compression. So significant is this effect, it can even change the perceived shape of a person's head. You might have seen those GIFs where you're zooming in and out with the camera and the person's head goes roo, 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 and that kind of thing. I'll try and find one. So what Apple calls zoom though, is nothing of the sort. They don't zoom, they don't move the lenses, they don't change the focal length, they just crop. They claim the new iPhone can shoot in 24, 28 and 35 mil. iPhone can shoot higher resolution photos in 24, 28 and 35 millimeter focal length. And it simply does not do that. They literally just cut out the middle bit of an image and call that a zoom lens. I've been doing it throughout this entire video. I'm taking a 4K video source, which is the wide shot, and my zoom is a crop. And as you can see, it does nothing to change the relative compression, me versus the background, or the shape of my head or anything. And it is not a zoom. No one who does this calls it a zoom. It's a crop. We have two different words because they are two different things. But Apple literally flat out called this cropping a new focal length. Going from 13 to 120 millimeter focal length. And it's just not, that's not how any of this works. It's a crop, it's not a new focal length. It's very, very useful to do this kind of cropping. I'm doing it again. Photographers do it all the damn time in still images, usually in post-production to adjust their composition or framing. Maybe they caught something at the edge of the frame they didn't notice, they just slice it out. But in Exactly zero ways is it a new focal length. Nothing about the focal length or what it does to a captured image and its aesthetic has changed at all. All you're doing is getting rid of some data off the sides and tops and the bottoms. Apple claimed their so-called telephoto lens has a five times optical zoom. Our longest optical zoom yet. Five X optical zoom. And it just doesn't. It has one X because it has zero zoom capability. It has a software crop which is not in any way optical zoom. They're differentiating it from a digital zoom because they're not cropping and then scaling up, which is what a lot of digital zooms do. They you know, crop in and then stretch everything out again, which is why digital zooms look so terrible. But the image sensor in these new iPhones have so many pixels, you can crop in and still get a very, very sharp image. You don't need to do the digital zoom fakery upscaling anymore because you've got enough pixels if you just crop but it is not zooming. It's very smart use of technology and will make the 15 Pro uh, as a camera extremely flexible and very, very useful and very powerful. But it is a marketing lie when they tell you it has optical zoom and different focal lengths. And they claim that these three fixed lenses give us seven different lens selections. Macro is one of the seven lenses of the new Pro camera system. Again, an absolute lie. A crop is not a zoom. A crop doesn't change lens characteristics. It does not change the depth compression. It only throws away the edges of an image that does not give you a new lens. It is not an optical zoom. It is not a zoom of any kind. It does not magically produce a new zoom if you just crop the edges off an existing image taken with one lens. And it drives me crazy that they just lie like this and keep getting away with it. I'd love to see someone challenge this as, as false advertising, but Apple, you know, have more money than most countries do. So all that would happen is it'd be tied up in the legal system for a decade or more and then quietly settled once it's been made so pointless, it doesn't even matter anymore. And the whole damn time, Apple would just keep lying anyway, because that's the system we live in. But it also doesn't matter. As I said, most people are so wildly ignorant about all of this stuff I've been talking about, uh, what these words actually mean in the context of photography, they will just not care and will never care. Results is what matters. And Apple's lies are close enough to a truth of effective experience, for the layman at least, who doesn't remotely understand focal lengths or how cameras work on a physical level, depth compression, cropping versus zooming, even the resolution you throw away by cropping has become so irrelevant when 80% of people just look at these damn images on their shitty tiny screens anyway, so it doesn't matter how much resolution you got, you've got five times, the even if you crop by half, you've still got five times the resolution anyone's gonna be looking at it on. So Apple's marketing want to and get away with 
uh, giving ignorant people the image of professional photography words because it makes them feel creative and, and powerful that lets them cosplay as photographers having this thing in their pocket that has all these fancy photography words attached to it and it doesn't matter really an image that looks cool or a video that's pleasant to watch is the goal at the end of the day and the lies don't change how powerful a tool the phone is for doing that job but it does seriously annoy me that they just lie so blatantly though it's not really their fault, I suppose, that most of their customers are morons who have no idea what they're actually doing and will never even come close to actually using this tool to its best capability. They just want to believe that the gadget in their pocket is the best one, and, and even if they have no clue how to use it effectively or what any of the stuff does and means. They just, they just know if they press this button that they can see their friend in this much of the screen. That, that, that's zoomed to them. Pinch to zoom. It's not zooming. <laughs> That's cropping. You are pinching to see the middle bit of the image. In no way is that a zoom in photography terms. We call it pinch to zoom because it's just easy to understand for idiots. But it's, it's not really zoom when you're talking about how we use the word zoom in photography. It's fine on smartphones, I suppose, but that's, that's why we have this issue with the words. They don't mean the same thing in different contexts. And in photography, that's zoom. Physically adjusting a lens to change, physically change the focal length. Not just cut out the bit in the middle of the image. <sighs> well, now I've said my piece and now I can just link this video whenever someone <laughs> talks about the stuff. I can just go, well, actually, watch this fucking video. I can be done with this, right? I never have to... Just have this stuck in my head ever again? Is that the way it works? Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time. Look, I'll zoom. Oh, 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 I'm zooming. Whee!